Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's episode, we are going to be talking about Dino 1.6. That's one, two, three, six, 1.6. Uh, it is the most exciting release of Dino that I've seen in a long time. I've talked about Dino on this channel before. Uh, check the links down below for the links to the old videos of Dino explaining what Dino is if you're already lost. But for those that are with me, hey, how's it going? Let's uh, talk about the cool things in Dino 1.6. The coolest thing. In Dino 1.6, the reason why I've actually made this video is the marquee feature is this new Dino compile feature. Let's enhance this. Um, I am so thrilled that Dino compile has been added to Dino core. Uh, essentially, Dino compile lets you build a self-contained standalone binary for your Dino application. So typically when you well, here's an example with a typo. I never have typos in my videos. Um, typically when you share node applications or Dino applications and somebody wants to use it, they have to run npm install or have Dino or node itself installed on their machine. That's the big thing that it, requir it requires that node or Dino is on the machine, which makes it much more difficult to share self-contained executables. So if you're writing a program in Go or Rust, you can just create an executable, send it to somebody, and it's all self-contained, and you can just run it on your computer and it works fine. And that is what Dino Compile is bringing to Dino. More so than that, because Dino is what it is, they actually built this into Dino itself. So in the node land, you've been able to do this for a long time. There's been these third party packages, one called package from the Vercel fellows that lets you um, package node applications into one. There's also been this one, uh, Nexi, N-E-X-E, uh, that compiles your node application into a single executive file. But this is the node way of doing things where everything is its own little module. You know, that meme where NPM modules are just the black holes weight. Uh, yeah, that's the no way of doing things. But Dino, I love Dino. They just build it right in. So um, it makes it just drop dead simple to make a self-contained standalone binary. So what does it look like? So they have this demo right here. I'm just going to copy and paste it to show you what it looks like. Um, what's cool about Dino is that, you know, you can reference a source file on the web. So this is actually... Um, this file that I'm going to make into a self-contained executable. So this is this long file server thing. Uh, you call the Dino compile command, passing in the unstable flag, which is a Dino land idiom where they'll prototype ideas in Dino core, but until they're committed to stability of the feature and you want to use them, you have to actually pass the unstable flag to essentially say, oh, I know this is a little bit of a dragon, there be dragons situation, so um, be careful. So here I'm just gonna run this command in my VS Code editor. That's gonna download all the dependent packages, uh, do a little TypeScript check on it, bundle it, compile it, and emit it. You can see right here, I have right here, and it's a binary. And if I run file server, this is the file server that we just compiled, built in, and here we go. It's a whole little file server built in. Um, the one downside here, uh, is it's large. Um, it's almost 50 megs for a small file. So let me show you a more drastic example of where things get a little bit big. So if I do, um, the world's most overproduced logger, uh, if I do console log, holy banana boats, which is what I say to my son a lot because I can't curse. Um, let's do, do you know, compile unstable. And we're going to do logger. It's going to compile that down. And now I can just run the executable here. And it says, holy banana boats. But as I mentioned, this logger is 48.8 uh, megabytes long. So my file that I wrote is this one line. Uh, but the actual executable is 48. And the obvious reason for that is that they're actually including all of Dino itself into this executable, meaning that you don't have to depend upon it wherever you go. Um, they know this is a thing that's not great, uh, which is good. Um, they have future plans to eventually, um, a lot of unnecessary code 
is included in the binary. Yeah, you can see that again. Um, they think that there's a way to make the core binary size 20 megs, which is pretty damn good um, to strip out unnecessary code. They're working on it in this PR, which uh, has no detail in the PR, but like, holy crap. I was gonna look at this PR and actually try to see what was happening, and then I saw the diff, and I was like, oh yeah, there is no chance in hello there that I'll understand what is going on here. Uh, just, I guess they imported like an entire thing, which is just, oh man, I wish them luck, that's a pretty exciting thing to do. But this is a new feature built into Dino 1.6 by default. Uh, you have to make sure that you have Dino 1.6 installed to use it. Um, and it's just fantastic. It, it's another further example of why Dino's approach of just doing the most pragmatic thing is so delightful. Whereas Node tried to, I would say Node tries to do the right thing where most decisions are made by committee, which takes an awfully long time and is very hard to do. Dino's just like, nah, this is our fun little project. We're just going to do what we want to do. And it's producing delightful results. Uh, I'm curious, will you, is this a reason that might get you to start using Dino? Do you have reasons to want to make self-contained self standalone binaries? I mean, imagine if you're working on some third-party SDK, you could just package that entire thing up and let somebody use it, like your own little um, private SDK for your website. Just so you can write it in Dino and then package it up and you're good to go. Uh, Dino continuously impresses me. It just makes things easy and pragmatic, and this is just another exa great example of them doing so. So, curious to hear your thoughts about Dino. Um, also in this release, they have a uh, built-in Dino language server, which is uh, definitely an underrated, awesome feature of this release. It's essentially what makes VS Code awesome. Like, TypeScript has a language server protocol that VS Code asks, says, hey, I wrote this code, what does it do? And the language server protocol says, it does this, and that's where you get all these lovely IntelliSenses in there. Um, this is now being built into Dino itself again. So it's fantastic. Dino is so cool. Uh, that's the video for today. Hopefully you enjoyed learning about Dino Compile. Uh, I wanna hear if you have used Dino because the community is definitely pretty small, but I think with releases like these, it's bound to just grow fast. So catch you in the comments. Until then, see you in the next video.